Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this episode, we're going to be talking about investing in stocks. Now, this is a topic I've been wanting to do for some time now, but I'll be honest with you, investing in individual stocks hasn't been a strong suit of mine. I mean, just check out my portfolio here that I opened a while back. As you can see, it's really not much to brag about. These stocks were pretty much chosen randomly, nor do they have much money in them. I know it sounds bad, but is it something you've experienced too? Does it sound familiar? I know for my example, I'm quite well versed in funds as an investment vehicle, which is why I tend to stick to them when it comes to my investment techno babble when I talk about it on this channel. But alas, I feel like the time has come for me to step outside of my comfort zone and give it another shot. Now, before I get into it, I just want to say that a person's financial journey is exactly that, a journey. So you may read me for not knowing how to invest in a stock, and even question how on earth does this person even have a YouTube channel? Look, investing in stocks is just one part of personal finance and it definitely isn't the easiest. And there are far more simpler ways to start out if you are new to this, which has been the main focus on this channel. But anyway, before I go off in a tangent, I will be investing in stocks and this time round, I have an action plan. Over the last couple of weeks, I have been doing a fair bit of research and there are two books that I would highly recommend you all read. The first book is called Warren Buffett's Three Favourite Books, A Guide to the Intelligent Investor, Security Analysis and the Wealth of Nations. And the second book is The Dundo Investor, The Low Risk Value Method to High Returns. Both books are amazing reads and what I have actually learned from The Dundo Investor will form the basis of today's video. I am continuing to research as we speak, but I do find myself going down a path which focuses on one particular style of investing and that is called value investing. Now, because there is a lot that I want to go through and I don't have time to edit it all, I am going to be breaking this video into two sections. The first part is to go through the methodology of how to value invest by what is lectured in the Dando Investor. And then in the second part, I will take you through an actual example of how to analyze a particular stock to help us decide whether or not it's worth buying. But more on that later. I'm Kozan from Financial Manners, helping you be better with your money. So first up, let's understand what is meant by value investing, which I've already mentioned is just one of the methods you can use to decide whether or not to buy a stock. So the fundamentals of this methodology is that you should only buy a stock when you believe that the stock is trading under its real or what is known as the intrinsic value. Now this is better explained with an example. So let's look at the price of a Coca-Cola stock. A quick Google search shows that the market price of one stock is $59.43. Now this market price that we see here doesn't necessarily mean that it is the fair price for Coca-Cola because companies that are publicly traded have their share price influenced by external factors. Speculation and demand for a stock can sometimes over and under inflate the market price, which will see it diverge away from its intrinsic value. For example, let's imagine if a popular but untrue rumor spread that Coca-Cola and PepsiCo were going to merge this will send the demand for these stocks to skyrocket when in actual fact, nothing has even happened yet. But because of this increase in demand, this caused the market price to go way over the actual intrinsic value of the company. And similar situations can cause the opposite to happen too. But the point I'm trying to make here is that the market price of a stock doesn't necessarily equal the fair price of that stock. So when it comes to value investing, what we want to be doing is to find stocks that are trading below their intrinsic value before considering buying them. Because eventually the market price will catch up and meet or come close to the fair price at some point, And that is where we reap most of the rewards. Now, this is only one of the main cruxes of value investing. And I don't want you to start thinking that this is just a numbers game because it certainly isn't. Dando Investor by Manish Pabrai talks about how you should approach investing opportunities by using the Dando framework. He mentions that most people believe that in order to achieve higher returns, you need to invest in something higher risk. And then the book goes into detail as to why this isn't necessarily true. With the following phrases being repeated throughout his book, which is heads I win, tails I don't lose so much, and few bets, big bets, infrequent bets. So let's go through the key takeaways in the Dundo framework. First is to focus on investing in existing businesses. Now, using this methodology isn't actually ideal for startups because the method does rely quite heavily on looking at past performance to determine the future growth of a company, which unfortunately a new startup business won't be able to provide us with information on. 
This is why the Dando framework suggests focusing on existing businesses who have already stood this test of time. Of course, a company's past performance can no way determine its future performance, but what you'll soon realize is that we can only ever make educated guesses and sticking with an existing company will always be less riskier than investing in a new one. Remember, it's all about figuring out which stock is heads I win, tails I don't lose so much. Secondly is to buy in simple businesses in industries with a slow rate of change. Now, Warren Buffett mentioned once that drastic change is always a big danger for business. Look at the home movie industry as an example. Physically renting or buying videos and DVDs have pretty much become extinct with everything moving online. Some companies have adapted to this change and succeeded like Netflix, while others have not. That is why it's really important to choose. Well, I know I said simple businesses, but really what I meant is that it should be a business that you understand. The Dando book does mention that you should only invest in companies that are in your circle of competence. That way you can really understand the industry and its rate of change. For example, Coca-Cola is an industry with a slow rate of change, and you can probably still see it around in the next couple of decades. Facebook or certain cryptocurrencies, however, who knows? Third is to buy distressed businesses in distressed industries. Look out for opportunities when great businesses might be available at a cheap deal because of some bad news they or their industry has received. This goes back to my earlier point of finding companies that have their market price lower than their intrinsic value and then understanding why. Fourth is to buy businesses with a durable competitive advantage or what the book calls moats. You want to invest in a company which has a competitive moat that is hard to beat. Sticking with Coca-Cola as an example, Coca-Cola's moat is that even with a bajillion other soft drinks available, people seemingly like it the most, which is why it's always the number one sold soft drink worldwide. YouTube's moat is that it is one of the largest online video platforms with hardly any other close competitors, etc, etc. Fifth is to bet heavily when the odds are in your favour. This goes back to the motto, few bets, big bets, infrequent bets. Now, finding companies under the Dundo framework does take patience, but when you do find a good deal, you should bet heavily on it. The book does provide a formula to help you decide on how much you should invest, and that is known as the Kelly formula, which I'll link in the description box down below. Six is to buy businesses at a discount to their intrinsic value. Now I have already kind of mentioned this at the beginning when I was talking about value investing and I will be focusing on how to do this in part two of this video. But for now, I just want to mention that this type of calculation will never be an exact science. This is purely educated guesswork. The method I will be going through is the DCF analysis, which stands for discounted cash flow analysis. And this focuses primarily on one key metric, which can be obtained from most companies' cash flow statements, and that is their free cash flow. Free cash flow essentially represents how much cash is remaining after subtracting all of the costs that are required for that company to stay in business, such as buying capital, paying employees, taxes, etc., etc. The money that is left over goes into the owner's pocket, and this is the free cash flow amount. And this is why most people are so interested in this number. And it is because businesses can use this money as freely as they decide, whether they choose to reinvest it back into the company, pay out extra bonuses or pay extra dividends to their shareholders. The amount of free cash flow a company has and how it is used can be considered as one of the main foundations to deciding if a company is worth investing in. If the free cash flow is high, then we are likely to see a good return on our investment. If it is low or at a deteriorating rate, or even worse, they have none, then this can signal big problems which would require more investigation. There will be more on this in part two of the video soon, and I'll put a link in here when it is available. And lastly is the art of selling. Now, when it comes to selling a stock, this can be just as hard or even harder than buying the stock, because it can be quite a task to figure out when is the best time to sell. The Dando framework does provide some guidelines on this, and it suggests not to sell the stock within the first two or three years of buying it. After three years, you are free to do with it as you may. The reason being is that market prices of a company are ever fluctuating. So it can take time for the market value to catch up and reach the true intrinsic value, especially if a company is going through a change as this process can take a few years rather than a few moments. This is why you do need to allow for some time to pass and avoid getting too emotional when you do see market fluctuations happening over the short term. 
The Dando framework suggests two to three years is the minimum amount of time you should let go by before considering your position. Remember, calculating the intrinsic value is not an exact science, and there can be times when you are wrong. So if this is the case, it may be worth selling, but only after the two to three year mark. Otherwise, if all is well, the framework does suggest looking at holding the stock for at least 10 years. Cool, so that is it for this week's episode. Let me know if you do have any questions down below. And remember, if you did find this video incredibly useful, I would appreciate if you smash that like button. That does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and the growth of this channel. And yeah, I will be releasing part two of this video next week. So if you want to keep up to date with those, hit the subscribe button as well. See you later. Bye.